श्री जगन्नाथ पुरी धाम की जय श्री माया पूर्ण होती धाम जय आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू बी हियर वृंदावनेश्वरी वेरी हैप्पी I was just saying, I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> I was thinking that you see, I come get a royal treatment, and that should be the purpose of my coming. The purpose of my coming should be. help spread krishna consciousness actually that's why we all are here there is no doubt that krishna consciousness is the most precious spiritual object we are fortunate that we got it and now we have to create the good fortune for others who haven't got it so that should be our objective we should always consider how to spread this movement i can see like how things have changed you see when we we joined the movement Krishna consciousness was in a very young phase. Prabhupada was on the planet; he just started to move. And practically everyone was brahmachari. And those days, practically all the devotees were Westerners, mostly Americans. But now this one has embarked on or shifted into another phase, where most of the members of this one are householders, and most of them are Indian. Like it's a uh, those days there was no India, there were very few Indians. And Prabhupada used to sometimes lament that everyone is coming to India now, and now it's all Indians and very few Westerners. So we have to seriously consider how to make this movement spread, like. I know it's difficult for the Australians to join the movement or accept this lifestyle for the principle because this culture, you know, this is uh, their whole lifestyle is based on meat and alcohol. For them to change. It will be difficult. Like when Prabhupada was here, the young ones joined, and they are, you know, they are generally adventurous. They like to do something unusual. And also, the world was going through a very different phase at that time. The America was going through this counterculture, the hippie culture, and the youth of the world was actually looking forward, or rather, being. Affected by that, influenced by that. Like I remember, in the early 70s, I was in Germany, and especially in the university, the influence of hippie culture was so prevalent. Like right in the middle of Europe, actually, they were affected by that the culture of that American counterculture. world has changed and now we have to see how to make this movement spread i'm sure the indian have a 
very significant role to play. Actually, when he first went to Durban, they <coughs> arranged a program for me. Uh, it was a banquet inviting the important congregation. In that, I was actually telling them that, that Krishna has placed various Indians at different parts of the world with a purpose. And that purpose is to spread, to help spread Krishna consciousness. Because the Indians will naturally respond to that because it is their culture. They will naturally feel inclined. Although it is a universal culture, Krishna consciousness is not a body culture. It's a spiritual culture. It's not a material culture. It's a spiritual culture. And when we come to the spirit soul, spirit soul is neither Indian nor American. It's just, just the body that is has those disciplines. But at the same time, uh, in pe I mean, people do get affected by that. Like the Indians naturally would feel because their lifestyle is so akin to Krishna consciousness that they will naturally feel that it is their culture. Like India has been the country where Krishna consciousness always prevailed. But Mahaprabhu predicted that this movement would spread all over the world. It's in every town and village is going to spread. Now our concern should be how to make it spread. And ultimately what is the objective of Krishna consciousness? The objective of Krishna consciousness is to make us conquer death. To make everybody conquer death. As long as we are in our body consciousness, we are susceptible to die. But when we transcend our bodily platform and come to the spiritual platform, then we achieve immortality. The spirit soul is eternal. So, ultimately, Krishna consciousness is going to teach everybody how to come to death. That means how to get out of, how to transcend the bodily platform and come to the spiritual platform. And in that platform, one naturally transcends his bodily degradation. So everybody needs Krishna consciousness. And Krishna consciousness is meant for everybody. So now we have to consider how to make it happen. Like one thing today, I mean, as I was mentioning, like uh, now the participation, they mostly Indian participation. But if it just remains as an, as an Indian participation, then the others will shy away. They will think it's an Indian thing. They will not come. Therefore, we have to make a conscious <coughs> effort to invite others, bring others. Like, for example, when Srila Prabhupada went to Africa, Nairobi, uh, they invited the Indian, local Indian important people to meet Srila Prabhupada. People were naturally happy to meet them, but when they left, Robert asked them, asked the devotee, did I come to Africa to meet the Indians? Did I come all the way to Africa to meet the Indians? He asked, where the, where the Africa? And then the devotees went. Next day they brought the Africans. So similarly, we, I mean, we have to understand from that that Prabhupada created an international society. That means the countries that we are in, the local participation is very important. If the local participation is not there, that means our 
we are not being we are not successful in implementing this Krishna consciousness. And I tell you one thing, you know, although I know like when one is in a householder situation, household situation, it's different it's difficult because to maintain the household and like you don't really have that kind of time to to get involved in preaching and spreading Krishna consciousness. But still what to do since you know like Since we are, few of us are here, whatever little ability we have, whatever little means we have, we must utilize it to spread Krishna consciousness effectively. And now how to do it? Let's all think about it. to make it successful how because we have to attract the Australia. We are in Australia. Now it the resistance will be there. For them it will be difficult to follow the four regulations. But Krishna has put it, Krishna has his ways. Krishna has his inconceivable ways of doing things. Like maybe we should not put so much emphasis on the regulative principles that we should probably just make them chant. And it is, Kirtan is becoming very popular. In America, Kirtan, I mean, uh, Kirtan is becoming very popular, but unfortunately, Iskon, who actually started the Kirtan movement, is not in the forefront. There are different other groups, different other people, they have become, they have taken over, you know, the scene. That should have been actually predominated by Islam. And I mean, you see, this is how things are, we are, are, Krishna is going to make things conducive to his propagation of Krishna consciousness. He will. I mean, but we have to take the initiative. Yes, no doubt about that, that Islam is going to be difficult. And it's unavoidable. Prabhupada left the planet. How can we expect that everything will be as glorious as ever? But the good thing is, the good positive thing is that 33 years after Prabhupada's disappearance, Iskon is still together. Iskon and Iskon is very strong. So, now that we are in Australia, now that we are in Brisbane, we must make a conscious effort that, that we try to attract the Westerners. Not that we are in the bodily platform as such, but for the sake of the... It's not for to be in the bodily platform, but it is for the future of the movement that we have to consciously For us, Australian Indians, whoever comes, we are happy. But we have to make a conscious effort to attract the Australians to Krishna consciousness. Now that we are in their country. Now how to do it? The, one of the most important things is whatever we do must be first to us. We must Whatever we do, must, we must do it in a first class way. Then people will be attracted. If our ways are third class, then first class people won't come. Why first class? I mean, nobody will come. So our presentation must be very, very first class. The best. Krishna consciousness is the best because it's not of this world. It's of the spiritual side. With that in mind, we have to make an effort to present Krishna consciousness. So I just want you all to think about it, how to make it, how to make it happen. Yes, Sathya. Well, we just, <coughs> <coughs> the 
explain to you, we just had uh, my Guru Maharaj's program. Right, yeah. I was just thinking of that. The was spiritual. Right. And, um, and this kind of program must be emphasized. So in Sydney and Melbourne they had the shows. Right. Um, in the last two years we did free shows here. But this year we said, okay, we'll charge. Um, and you know, here we did... People here are so there's, nice. there's no... I, mean, I found that people here to be very nice. Yeah. And the thing is, that important thing is that, you know, Krishna, we must present Krishna consciousness to the Western people. Like if we just limit it only to the Indians, then it will be... Like they must... When they will see that the Westerners are involved, then they will become attractive. Especially when you see that the Western leaders are there, then Westerners are leading them. Then they will be able to... Prabhupada wanted it to be a lame man and blind man in Deva. I was hearing uh, Shyam Sundar Prabhu and uh, uh, Buddha Prabhu and them. They were just saying that there's no principles, no deities, nothing at all. Shyam Sundar was carving Jagannath yeah. and smoking yeah. cigarettes. <laughs> Who is, you know, rendering service to Lord Jagannath? That's how we have to we have to make our approach. When they become fixed up, yeah, then it is. Uh, you know, the, I mean, then yes, this strictness, this gradually should be implemented. But to attract people initially, we have to be. <coughs> and uh, in Raghunda Maharaj's program, is you know, a very wonderful way of doing First, to attract them. Let them appreciate Krishna consciousness. Then we will be. Why it took you so long? Actually, was. Somebody took your bag. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody actually took your luggage. And I bet his luggage came in. It was a mistake. It took your time. We phoned him. The biggest luggage service is the phone. Him. And one problem went to his hotel to collect your bag and return his bag. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Yes, Tiambo called me when he has your bag. So next time, put, put a strap. Make it distinct. That is different. Mm -hmm. Like take a saffron or red belt, mm. right? You get that? Yeah. Just strap it around. Okay. It was not actually the same, but he was in like very hurry. He just took the bag. And So here, that is coming, that is coming. Yes, Theo is bringing it. Yes, Theo. He's, because what, the man who has the bag, he's staying in the city. So he's gone, he took that man's bag from the, because Yes, Theo's waiting for his auntie to come. So he's got that man's bag, give that bag back to him. Take your bag. He'll wait for his aunt to come? Yeah. First, and I then he'll take it. Yeah, he should, he should be as getting the bag. As long as it comes here. He'll call me as soon as he goes. And where's that man still? In the city, so it's on the way. In a hotel. In a hotel. Which hotel? Yeah. Uh, I got it's on Alice Street. Thanks. They're getting what? Krishna consciousness automatically, Maharaj. They didn't ask for it. <laughs> he's a Punjabi, actually, some Kerala or something. Oh, he's a Indian. <laughs> <laughs> that says it all. <laughs> Maharaj, you are very relaxed actually. Many sannyas they have seen, they will not leave the airport unless they have their bags with them. <laughs> Last time, you know, when Allah Krishna Maharaj was here, you know, he made us count his bags like two or three times and you made sure everything is there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I will. 
Did you? Uh, okay. Where is Janet? Maybe. Yeah.